Well, greetings, everyone. I'm Pastor Nate, pastor of Green Community Church, and I'm here with my two pastor friends, brothers in Christ, George Altieri and Philip Ruiz. And we're going to be talking about an up-and-coming conference that we're going to have called Examining the Roots and Fruits of the Word of Faith Movement. And this is going to be February 9th through the 11th, and we're going to put the information up on our website. But um, February 9th is a Sunday, so we're going to start uh, during the Sunday school hour. We're going to have an evening session. It's going to go Monday and Tuesday. And the special speaker that we're going to have come and talk about the Word of Faith movement is Justin Peters. And we've asked Justin Peters to come because I think he's uh, a very biblical man, very solid. He's got uh, a lot of experience. He came out of the Word of Faith movement. But one of the main reasons I wanted him to come and speak on this is because he's just a very gracious individual. Um, uh, it's easy to ask him questions. It's easy to interact. We're going to build in a lot of question and answer time uh, for this conference. So this discussion right here is just kind of uh, prepping and getting ready for this important conference. So um, I thought we would just, um, I throw out a couple questions, have you guys answer them. Uh, I know a little bit about your background, you know, coming out of the, of the charismatic uh, world and some of the things that God has taught you in the process. So, first of all, uh, what is the Word of Faith movement? When you, when you hear that term, um, what does it mean and how would you clarify it to people who might want to know what we mean by that? Yeah. Well, the Word of Faith movement, it's, it's exactly what it is. It's a movement. It's not a denomination. It's not a, a, a council. It, it's a movement um, that includes certain aspects of uh, uh, teachings and beliefs and practices um, but the Word of Faith movement um, found, finds its uh, origins in what has developed from the Pentecostal and the Charismatic movement. Um, so we could say that the, the Word of Faith movement is kind of like the third evolution of, of the Pentecostal and the Charismatic movement um, over the past 100 years. Um, so there are certain beliefs that the Word of Faith movement um, uh, teaches and there are some practices that they do on a, on a daily, weekly, and it's part of their life, um, but the Word of Faith movement, it, it's not just a specific group in one denomination, it's a certain, it's, it's a broad uh, system of, of thinking and belief that you can see it in most of the major denominations here in the United States. Um, so Word of Faith basically uh, teaches that there's power in the words that you have and that you confess and that you declare. Um, that uh, if you want something to happen in your life, you need to declare it, you need to decree it, you need to confess it with your mind. Positive confession is tied to the Word of Faith movement. Um, they reject anything that has to do with suffering, anything that has to do with sickness. Um, so there's many things that, that add entail the Word of Faith movement. And the Word of Faith movement is actually, in many sense, the face of Christianity in many places around the world. That's usually what you're going to see when you turn on the TV or a lot of the larger churches mm -hmm. out there that have a little bit more of a presence. You're going to see that Correct. Word of Faith, some version of it. Correct. So what you see on CNN, Fox News, and some of the major TV networks when something scandalous happens, usually um, the face that they see is, you know, Word of Faith teaching or Word of Faith theology or Word of Faith preachers. So you would say in a nutshell, it's the belief that God has granted authority to Christians mm -hmm. to speak certain things into existence. Correct. And that uh, what they usually speak into existence would be a healing if they need a healing, mm -hmm. finances if they need more finances, yes. success, job promotion. So that's why it's called, it's sort of a... Uh, a branch of the prosperity gospel because mm -hmm. usually what we're speaking into existence are things under the category of correct material health yeah. things like that and if you don't acquire those things it means that you are either in sin um, or that you have some type of demonic influence in your life that does not allow you to acquire that health that healing or that physical or material prosperity okay. um, so that's like in a nutshell you know okay. what the word of faith movement is would you add anything to that, Philip? I, I would probably just add it's the Word of Faith movement is um, an interpretation of Scripture mm -hmm. that 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 
is being held um, that doesn't quite see the entire truth of, of I would say, the um, mainly the Holy Spirit and how the Spirit works uh, in the believer. Um, so I think it just, there's various ways to identify the Word of Faith movement. It doesn't always look the same, but um, it's really just a, a, an interpretation that they're holding uh, without really investigating whether or not it, there holds any truth of it. Okay. Um, and even though it, it may seem like what what people are praying for is being produced, but a lot of that uh, oftentimes is just temporary emotions. Mm -hmm. So, and and uh, we know that we know that um, God is merciful and He's patient and kind. Uh, so I would even say that you know when when in my younger or earlier years as a believer, where I was um, my interpretation of Scripture and what my expectations were, I think that even then God was still patient and. Mm -hmm. and and kind um, but as I grew in the knowledge of scripture and the doctrines and uh, really had a, a better look at the whole council I was able to identify what was God and what okay. wasn't so mm -hmm. I think the word of faith movement is, is an interpretation that really needs to to be uh, compared to scripture instead of what what the biggest preacher is saying about yeah. the Holy Spirit and that's one of the reasons I wanted you guys a part of this discussion because I know you spent many, many years there, and you said God was patient with you, worked with you. But so when you talk about word of faith, authoritatively speaking, what you declare into existence, what um, what was your experience when you were in that world? What was kind of the stronghold it had on you? And briefly, you know, what were the things that God used to open your eyes to see? This this isn't at all what, what God's word teaches. I would I would I would ask the question more what were the things I didn't see hmm. in comparison to what we were actually practicing? And the one thing that I didn't see was the evidence of what we were actually uh, um, believing God was gonna do. There was little evidence. Yeah. So I would say after a while, after years of feeling like one, I was insufficient, I had to do better, or two God wasn't listening. Mm -hmm. And so there was a, a, a failure of growing an intimate relationship with Christ and, and a failure to understand the promise in the new covenant and how we are in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so when, you, when, when you're led to believe that you have an active role on, uh, in areas of, of, of the Christian walk where it, it's really none of our business to be touching those areas, it's God mm -hmm. and His sovereignty, but you you began to question what you were doing and even now we're you know we're in 2020 and i look back and i can tell you that i mean the majority of, of things that i heard they did not come to pass mm -hmm. they don't they they aren't in existence or every every uh decla declared prophetic word of uh, of abundance and and well the majority of people that, that i know that are that that are desiring god mm -hmm. They felt they felt yeah. like they were shortened for some reason. Well, it's because they didn't they didn't know what the truth of the word of God said about God. You know that that's something that really broke my heart some years ago when I was studying a lot of this. How I would go to blogs or websites of a lot of these well-known prosperity preachers, and you know they would put out a blog or put out an explanation, and then you'd have all the comment sections underneath. And so often the comments were filled with their followers. But they were statements like, maybe this Sunday I'll get my healing, or maybe this time it'll come to pass. And you see all these people who, like you said, either something's wrong with them, or there's something they're doing that God's holding out of them, or some sort of demonic barrier. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I remember that event, it was, it was several years ago now, but I remember looking at the computer and my heart just breaking for the millions of people that have sort of shrunk down the view of God to the key to Christianity is a particular formula or is a certain, you know, mystical view of faith where if I do it right, if I punch in the numbers right, I'll get my product. And it's such a shrunk down view of God. And it, I think, cuts them off from the fullness of God that they're meant to enjoy, especially in the context of suffering and not having the things that you know, we would like that. Yeah, because yeah, usually what happens is that there's a there's in most of the cases there's a very low view or a non-existent view of the sovereignty of God. 
that's not a, a attribute or a topic that's addressed or taught in this type of uh, uh, churches and, 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 and people that, that teach these uh, uh, beliefs. But it's usually the sovereignty of man that is exalted um, within this context. And usually, you know, when they when they realize that some of the things that they're hoping for and praying for um, doesn't mean that God cannot do them, but they are completely erasing out of the equation the will of God and the sovereignty of God in the life of, of believers. Um, so did they try to grapple with those things like Ecclesiastes 7.14, in the day of prosperity, be happy. In the day of adversity, consider that God has made the one as well as the other. No, they don't. They don't. There's an imbalance. So when the scripture says both prosperity and adversity both come from the hand of God. No, they there, don't teach that. No, they teach that it's always prosperity. You always have to be full blessed. And if it's not prosperity, it's not from God. Correct. Then it's not from God. It's either you're in sin or there's something wrong with you or you don't have faith. So there's a level of manip manipulation that goes on in the hearts of many people. And some of the leaders, I'm not going to say here that all of the leaders are doing this with bad intentions. Mm -hmm. Some of them are just doing it because that's what they've learned and that's what they've been taught. Um, but the, the problem is that the people that are under them are the ones that are really suffering mm -hmm. the consequences of this type of teaching. So what was your experience being in that world, surrounded by the word of faith? What are some things that God used to open your eyes? Yeah. Well, I came more from a classical Pentecostal movement, um, which maybe there's some elements of teachings that they both of them believe. Um, but then as I transitioned here into the States, uh, I was part of a, of a Word of Faith uh, church up in Dover. At the beginning, I didn't realize that it was a Word of Faith uh, church. But then as the years progressed, they started embracing some of this other stuff. And usually the one, the, the, the two things that stuck out to me the most was the part of the financial. They were always talking about money, always asking money. You got to sow a seed to mm -hmm. receive a miracle. You got to sow money to receive a blessing. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at scripture, I didn't see none of those practices or none of those, none of those beliefs there. Mm -hmm. um, but then I started realizing that the only ones that really prospered were the leaders. But usually the people in the congregation, they stay the same way. So I started asking myself, well, there's a problem here. Either all of us are lacking faith or all of us are in sin or all of us are influenced by some demonic power because it doesn't make sense that we are the congregation staying mm -hmm. the same, but the only ones that are prospering are the leaders of this church. Sounds like a pyramid scheme. Correct. And that, 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 that's, that's happened not only in that specific church. That happens in all the churches where this gimmick is being preached. Um, and then the second thing was the healings. Mm -hmm. They will, they will claim healings, they will prophesy healings, they will say that this person is healed, and they will make public announcements about these healings, and then stuff never happened. You know, people died, people got sick, people ended up in the hospital. Um, but then when stuff didn't happen the way they confessed, I always saw that they never gave an explanation to the church as to what happened. You know, it's like they will brush it off like nothing has happened here, there were families that were hurt. There was people that were deceived. Mm -hmm. There were people that were really questioning what happened. You know, the, the pastor or the prophet or the apostle that came, they prophesied healing over my family or my family member or me. And now look at the condition that I am. Well, those were the couple things that I started really searching inside of me and in scripture. And I read something is fishy here. Something yeah. is just not adding up. Yeah. Yeah. And I tried to talk to my leaders about it. But unfortunately, not all the leaders in this movement are open um, to really hear mm -hmm. uh, others bringing other points of view concerning it. They're just completely blind to the fact that what they're doing is right. Mm -hmm. You know, as you're talking, I'm thinking of Deuteronomy 13, Deuteronomy 18, 2 Kings 22, all different descriptions of prophets. And you know a true prophet by the simple fact that what he says comes to pass. Yeah. And if what he says doesn't come to pass, then he's a false prophet. Correct. And it's a one-strike policy. <clears throat> yes. You know, everything, especially in 2 Kings 22, you have the prophet Micaiah. And he is distinguished from all the other pro mm -hmm. false prophets, as the scripture says, because everything that he says comes to pass. And and that's one of the things I've, I've noticed. And you guys were on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, but I've never been on the inside. But just watching from a distance, it's... False prophecy is rampant. Yes, the leaders openly admit um, 
you know, a good profit might be right, what, 40% of the time, 45% of the and time. And they're okay with that. And they're very comfortable <laughs> with it, right. And it just seems to contradict everything I know about what the scriptures teach. Mm -hmm. um, and the same with financial prosperity. You know, you think of Peter who says, silver and gold have I none. You think of the Apostle Paul who was threadbare, shipwrecked. You think of Jesus, mm -hmm. nowhere to lay his head. Yeah. Um, you know, I think of Proverbs chapter 30, where um, where the writer says, Give me neither poverty nor riches. Mm -hmm. Feed me from the manna which is from heaven, which is the same as saying, Give me this day, you know, give us this day our daily bread. Yeah. Put food on the table, God. Just put a roof over my head. That's the basic humble request mm -hmm. of the Christian. So when I hear this, give me money, give me prosperity, give, you know, it's almost like there's a, 67th book of the Bible that I haven't read oh, right. <laughs> that that encourages that. So, you know, the issue, you know, isn't to solve it right here amongst mm -hmm. us, but I guess, you know, to hear from you guys, and I'm just throwing out some scriptures so that if uh, there are those who are in that movement, you're thinking through it, you're thinking, yeah, some of these things don't add up, um, to keep asking those questions, to yeah. keep going back to scripture, and not just looking at the isolated little verses, because I think some of these Word of Faith teachers are really good at kind of zinging yes. little phrases and little statements from the Bible mm -hmm. here and there, but not really understanding them in their larger context. So yeah. really studying out the whole context, what's what's the believer's approach supposed to be towards, towards healing mm -hmm. and towards uh, wealth. Um, yeah, and usually um, in, in this context and these places where, where this is the, the main teaching, the gospel is hardly ever preached. Um, there's no mention of Christ and his atoning death. There's no mention of new birth, regeneration, justification, um, all of those biblical truths that really have the power to transform somebody's life. They're, they're out of there. Like I, I learned, and I've been in church life for many years, and I learned most of this biblical truth when I left there. Wow. Um, you know, because they were not part of the essential teachings and doctrines that are being taught. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, there's, you know, someone might be watching this and saying, look, there's a lot of bad theology out there. There's mm -hmm. a lot of troubling theology. Um, why are you picking on this particular theology? Yeah. Why, why the Word of Faith movement? Um, why can't you just do something on, you know, how to live a Christian life, things like that? And I think we would all say we teach a lot of that in yes. our churches, but <laughs> if not the most on that. Uh, but what would be your answer to the question, why, what's so big and bad about the Word of Faith movement that it needs to be, it needs to have its own conference and we want everyone to come to it, to listen to it, and to take it to heart? What would you say, Philip? Or I guess another way to ask the question is, why is it so dangerous for the churches? Mm -hmm. So why why do we need to address it? And I, I think that one of the one of the things that I took away that blessed me about Justin Peters' ministry was that he was introducing the gospel. Um, he was introducing what the biblical um, character of, of the Holy Spirit. Um, and, and I would add to what Pastor George was saying in that it's evolving so fast that by the time we talk about one group doing something, mm -hmm. it's evolving so fast that if you don't learn what what the covenant is through Christ Jesus, if you don't learn what He did through the pouring out of His blood and His resurrection, His ascension, and His you know seat at the right hand of God, if you don't understand your identity and what that did uh, to our salvation, to our healing, to our uh, our, our regeneration to our salvation, then you you will expect for your best life to be now, because you're not understanding that that that, that we've already been bought by the blood of Lamb and we're going to be living for eternity. Mm -hmm. And certain things aren't happening right now. Mm -hmm. So you know we're 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 looking at scriptures like uh, life and death are in the power of the tongue, and and you know if, if I apply that right now, I will I, I will go and and try to use it to muster up here on earth. But really. Um, we're looking at something that's an eternal power and, mm -hmm. and having faith, confessing Christ, you know, um, uh, repenting. Those are things that, that, that Scripture is telling us we need to articulate. Mm -hmm. 
to express and then to be a light in the midst of darkness where where if i'm only looking at a a a close uh timeline then i'm going to be trying to do things now so i think it's it, it's how we're interpreting and again it's evolving so fast that what we were dealing with three or four years ago now you know there's there's groups that are sitting for days praying for a dead child to resurrect mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's evolving so fast that now you're mixing it into a, a culture and calling it a culture of worship. But it's still the Word of Faith movement. You're expecting yeah. people to gather together for days and days and days um, because there's an expectancy. But, but when, you, when you're free from that bondage of expectation of, of God to, to um, work how somebody else prophesied over you, mm -hmm. when I'm free from that and I'm looking at Christ alone, and I'm, I'm realizing that he's at work in me and that my, my salvation has come. You know, it takes that, that, that pressure off of, of expecting other men to satisfy what only Christ can. Mm -hmm. And it also, it, it takes the pressure off of myself to somehow, I mean, Peter continued circumcising. He thought he was doing what he was right, but he had to, he had to realize what Christ has done and, and, and what he was sufficient to do. So I think that um, mm -hmm. Some of it is really not trusting, yeah. not trusting in, in Christ and what he really did through the new covenant. And we see that. So it's evolving so, so fast that we really need a broad, and Justin Peters does a great, he, he gives you the the what are they, the 50,000 50, foot you know, mm -hmm. view and perspective of what's happening from all different angles. Right. Yeah. So it's almost like a, just condensing what you're saying, in the Word of Faith movement, it's getting what I don't have in the scriptures what we, what we see is you have everything you Correct. need for life and God bless you. you have Christ you are brought into union with Christ yes the young lions do lack and suffer hunger but those who wait upon the Lord shall not lack any good thing never so, have I seen the righteous forsaken or the children begging for bread right I mean those, those so, so it's just the Christian life already have in Christ exactly. rather than going to this prophet to get what we don't have. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's good. But also as a past as, as pastors, um, we serve in this area of Delaware and Sussex and King County. Um, people don't realize there's many believers around us, people that we love, that they don't realize that they are in some way, in some form, part of this. Maybe their church hasn't come out and openly expressed we are the word of faith mm -hmm. church. But the teachings are there, the practices are there, and um, we are concerned, I am concerned. Um, the Hispanic churches in our area are rapidly embracing this type of uh, uh, teachings and practices. So a conference like this is going to help uh, a couple different type of people. It's going to help the person that is kind of, what's going on here, but they're not sure you know how to def how to uh, confront that situation from a biblical standpoint but also the people that are completely immersed in that they're going to realize that there's a lot of believers out there that do not hold to those teachings and those practices mm -hmm. and we are called to uh, contend for the faith that we have received uh, 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 upon our lives um, so there's an urgency I cannot see other brothers and sisters in Christ being deceived and don't say anything Right. Um, so the way Justin Peter addresses some of these issues with the movement and their teaching, he does it with a lot of love, a lot of grace, a lot of patience, and it's very eye-opening mm -hmm. um, because it just puts it out there. And can, can I add? Mm -hmm. um, the conf I think there's a big confusion. Well, this is what we're not, we're not saying that we don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We're not saying that we don't believe in prayer. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that we don't pray for the Lord to provide and yeah. give provision. And that... When necessary, we ask God, "Would you would you bless me with a, a little bit more?" Why? Because we we're we're kingdom minded. We're sowing into the kingdom. We're using it uh, as unto the Lord. So does He bless? He does bless. When one of us are sick, we're praying. When someone's dying, we're praying. When someone is in need or suffering or lost a spouse, we're the first people to pray. But it's the interpretation. It's what what the you know what the practice is intending to do. And, um, and, and there's a very fine line where, where, where we, may, we may conjure up a method that really exalts man versus exalting Christ. Right. Right. It's trusting in the sovereign decision of God. So I think one of the biggest distinction is the Word of Faith movement would say it's always God's will to heal. Mm -hmm. It's always God's will to increase our finances. And we would say 
clearly know it's not always God's will to heal. If you, if you notice the way that some of the sick people addressed Jesus when they were approaching him for healing, they would say, if it is your will, you can make me whole. And Jesus would say, I will. Your faith is made. They would put it in the form of a question, or they would put it in the form of essentially, thy will be done. Yeah. Which is exactly what Jesus does in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, not my will, but your will right. be done. And that's what you just see constantly in the scriptures. That comes from having such a reverence and awe for a great and sovereign God who's generous. So you're saying he's generous, so ask him. Be bold with our requests. Sure. God, uh, help me in this situation. But you are infinitely wiser than me. I'm your child. I know that you have used sickness and poverty in believer's life to do extraordinary things. I know you're wise enough and great enough to do that. So in the end of the day, I'm content and I'm submitting to your will. And that is a much more God-honoring and peaceful way to walk before God than just this constant carrot before the stick right. kind of, I got to get my next healing, I got to get my next. Well, Je yeah. Jesus was in the wilderness and then um, Satan comes, Lucifer comes and tempts him mm -hmm. and, and is basically offering him, hey, you, at your command, at your, you know, the kingdoms are yours. And... Jesus, if I mean, if, if it was uh, his the purpose for him to just overcome and acquire all kingdom, he could have done that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that uh, the Word of Faith movement has taken taken the view that we are the uh, uh, literal little God, mm -hmm. and, and they've they've taken this grand view of themselves mm -hmm. instead of being in Christ as He is the mediator of the new covenant all the time, mm -hmm. mediating on our behalf, mm -hmm. offering up. You know, sacrifice for us once and for all. Instead of looking at Christ as the as as the absolute, mm -hmm. the the Word of Faith movement makes the individual their own kingdom ruler. Mm -hmm. So yeah. whatever you want, whatever you desire, whatever you and and it just doesn't just doesn't line up. It's a yeah. it's a it's a very uh, broken interpretation. And and obviously, when when you have a culture of poverty, when you have people suffering, when you have people hungry, people dependent on a government. There is, there's this natural desire to think that, hey, God, if, if I just ask God, he's going to bless me. Um, but the reality is, is that isn't the gospel necessarily. God does want to bless people, but not in the way that the prosperity gospel is pushing it. Where if you do more, if you do, you kind of get, you, God releases his stronghold from you and gives you blessings. But yeah. that's not, it's found in Christ. Well, if you go to the self-help section of Barnes & Noble and you read secularists on self-help, they're peddling the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. How to be more financially successful, how to be healthier, mm -hmm. how to be prosperous in life. Yeah. So it's almost like what the devil is dangling before the world, the gold that he says is gold that's mm -hmm. glittering, he's handed over to certain religious leaders mm -hmm. and now they're taking it and running with it. Correct. But what we're hoping to show in this conference is that it's not gold. It mm -hmm. glitters, yeah. but it's not gold. There's something, <laughs> something much better. So February 9th through 11th, uh, our website is Berean, that's B-E-R-E-A-N, Berean Community Church.com. And we'll have a place where you can go and find all the information. And uh, we hope that you will attend. And we know if you do, you'll benefit from it. Amen.